Problem number 20 from week 4 references two 2 by 2 centimeter square aluminum electrodes, half a millimeter part connected to a 100 volt battery. So the picture of this would be just what we've been drawing for a long time now, two parallel electrodes. You can think of these going in three-dimensional space if you want, something like this and like this. But there are two electrodes sitting here, and one side is connected this way across a battery, something like this. This is the schematic symbol for a battery, where this is the positive terminal, that's a negative terminal. In this case here, it's a 100-volt battery, something like that. So you bet the system will get all charged up, positive charge on this plate right here, negative charge on this plate right here. And that's the charge up system. An electric field will exist between these two plates here, sort of like this. And the very first problem is asking for what is the capacitance of the system here? Well, the definition of a capacitance here in A is that Q is equal to CV. This is a definition, something like F equals MA, you just have to know. Or alternatively, the capacitance is Q over V. So a couple of interpretations of the question of the equation here. The very top one says if you have a capacitor stored up, charged up to some potential V. This is how much charge is required to get that charging to happen. Alternatively, if you have so much charge held at this potential difference, this must be the capacitance of a system like that. So part A is asking for the capacitance, and you have a few things you can go on here. You can probably use this equation. Well, they're one and the same, but we'll just start with this form of it right here. And if you know that the distance between the two electrodes right here that are making the capacitor is half a millimeter, Oops, too many M's there, half a millimeter. And the potential difference across the capacitor plates are 100 volts like that. Again, you know that V is equal to E times D. Bed, if you will. Potential across capacitor plates is equal to the electric field times the distance between the plates. So what do you have? You have a distance between the plates here. Don't forget to convert to meters as you go about that problem there. You have the voltage, 100 right there. You can solve it for E. That would be the electric field between the capacitor plates. You should be able to get that. Once you know the electric field between the capacitor plates, you can drop off then and realize that you'll get some number for this here. And also, an uh, expression we've had in class a couple times before is what is the field strength between capacitor plates like this? Well, in the interior right there, the electric field is equal to sigma over epsilon naught. It's come up a few times now. That's the charge density on the plates. That's the electric field that gets created. So we'll have this numerical electric field that we have from sort of this analysis over here. Now we have an expression for the electric field over there as well. So if electric field is sigma over epsilon, sigma is just equal to the electric field times epsilon naught. That's the constant right there. If you wanted the charge on the plates now, which is something that this equation calls for here, what charge must be on the plates, you can go ahead and call charge here sigma times the area of either one of these plates here. That's how you go from charge to charge density by multiplying by the area. So this is the area and this is the charge density, the surface charge density. That will be the charge that ends up, uh, must be on the capacitor plates. So you can just do a little bit of plugging in now. C must be equal to C sigma times A over the potential between the plates. An expression like this here would allow you to sort of replace the Q, which is normally up here on the top of the capacitance equation, by some other form of Q, which in particular is charge density, coulombs per cube per square meter divided by the area times the area, excuse me, then the voltage sits right in here. So quite equation like that there would definitely allow you to get A to work out right. And you probably already have B written down because you have the charge expression for the charge on either plate right there, just the charge density divided times the area. Um, and it just sort of, the problem just keeps recurring back on itself in terms of what expressions are needed for this. You have the electric field here. Here's where the charge density comes from, and on it goes.